Today's project is especially important if you own an implement that includes a drive shaft. Odds are you either have a shear pin or a slip clutch that protects your tractor as well as protects your implement. And so today I'll be looking at a slip clutch and showing you um, the components of a slip clutch that I pulled off of my John Deere 336 baler. Before I even purchased this baler, I saw that the slip, cl slip clutch assembly had some major issues. So in front of me is the slip clutch assembly off of my John Deere 336, um, as I talked about. Now what I've already done is I've replaced the universal joint in this. Um, most folks have, have seen that done, so I didn't want to create a video on that. But this, this was extremely loose, uh, this, the, uh, the universal joint. It was, it was in bad condition. I had to replace it. And so um, another thing that this slip clutch, slip clutch assembly was extremely loose on the shaft of the baler. And so the shaft for my baler is about $1,500. And so the last thing I wanted to do was to continue to use um, the old uh, slip clutch disc because I knew it would end up destroying the, uh, the shaft on the baler and then I would have a much bigger issue than I currently have to deal with. So this assembly is designed again if the, if the um, implement comes to a sudden stop for some reason. For instance, let's say that something large gets inside of my hay baler and it stops baling hay and, and all the gears come to a sudden stop. And that's a very um, realistic uh, example then what's supposed to happen is this drive shaft is supposed to be able to continue to spin like you see it here and this is supposed to stop. So how does that happen? Okay, well, let's get into that. I'm going to go ahead and take the front of this shaft off. Again, this is not attached. And we're going to take a look at the inside of this slip clutch assembly. So now this is a very unique slip, slip clutch assembly, but for the purpose of this illustration, this is very applicable to just about any slip clutch system out there. Now I've already got these bolts loose, so I'm going to go ahead and take this, take these off real, real quick. Slip clutch assembly. I was pretty surprised when I disassembled this the first time because one of the friction discs was was literally missing. Okay, and uh, that's a bad thing. Um, it was metal on metal. It's like driving your automobile without brake pads. And so apparently the previous owner, I don't know if they knew about it, I, I assume they did. Uh, they decided just to run it without the slip clutch in there. But the way this comes apart is you, there's, a, there's a, basically a cover plate. We're going to set this aside. And there's the actual disc. Now the way this is supposed to work, this is a brand new slip clutch disc that I just purchased. Is there supposed to be a, a disc on each side? This is the... Uh, the inner disc, this is the this is the um, the disc itself, and then of course there's the um, the uh, inner inner uh, disc plate. And so the way this works is there's pressure being applied by the springs, and as the disc as something comes in sudden as the uh, implement comes in sudden contact with an object, what happens is is this disc will spin in place. This disc will spin in place and um, it being squeezed by these two these two friction discs. And so um, that is what keeps the, uh, the damage from occurring. Now here's the mistake that a lot of people make. So they let their baler get wet or their implement get wet. They leave it outside and what you end up having as you can see here is a lot of corrosion on this this uh, metal assembly. And so what happens is, is it literally rust, the, all these components rust together. And so when you hit something solid, it doesn't have any gift. And you end up causing damage as if you didn't even have a slip clutch assembly. So the whole purpose of the slip clutch assembly is to protect your implement. And it totally defeats the purpose of the slip clutch assembly if it's, if it's over tightened or if it's rusted all together. So today what I want to show you is what to look for and, and what you should, should do to make sure your slip clutch is ready to go. So the first thing I would encourage you to do if you just bought an implement that was used, do like I did. Take the thing apart and see what you got. All right, and um, so we're going to set the, the disc, the, uh, the slip clutch disc aside. And the second thing we're going to do is go ahead and take, take this and set this aside. Take the, the bolts and, 
okay? Now what I want to show you with the old metal disc, now your tractor implement may be different, but these usually come with, they're usually right on a set of spline. And it's probably going to be nearly impossible to see, I'm going to try to get a close up zoom here, but these spline are badly worn. And another thing I want to show you is that this disc is badly warped. It's actually uh, concaved and um, it, it's, it's because it was used without the, the slip, slip clutch um, friction disc on each side. Like I said, there was only one. And so there's been some significant damage and there's no way to fix this. In fact, because of the damage to the spline, as I had previously stated, um, it's a wise decision to go ahead and replace this. Now this part was $110 to replace at John Deere. That's a lot cheaper than $1,500 and it's a lot easier to replace. Now these friction discs were about, about somewhere around $25 to $30 each. And so, you know, for me to fix this is relatively affordable compared to the uh, potential damage I could experience if this isn't working properly. So if you look carefully, you can see the spine on this slip clutch. Um, you can see that they're badly worn. And I'm going to hold up a new one in just a minute so you can compare. And I'm th hoping you can also see that there is, if you look carefully, you can see that this, uh, this disc assembly is actually warped. And the top edge is, is leaning to, to my right to your left. So I'm going to hold up the new assembly and let you compare the difference in the spline. Um, as you can see here, the spline are uh, much thicker and um, just they're, the gear, you can just see a, a much more fuller set of spline. So once again, just a quick comparison, the new, the new, the new versus the old. Your implement probably doesn't need this replaced, but if you have a lot of play, if there's a lot of side to side play, this is definitely something you want to check into because it will cause damage down the road if you don't. You can see there's some, there's some crud on this, on this disc. Now what some people do at the beginning of the season is they loosen up the bolt, the, the, uh, the springs on their, slitch clutch, their slip clutch assembly and they'll turn their PTO on and they'll let things sort of um, move around and that'll break up the rust and it'll, it'll clear up a lot of this, um, this stuff that's accumulated over time. Since this is a new slip clutch um, assembly that I'm putting in, I want to do some work to it before I put it together because I have some... I have some stuff uh, I'll show you here. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that you really want to try to clean up some. Now I don't have any, um, I don't have any brake cleaner, but I do have, um, I need something to lubricate my wet and dry sandpaper. This is 320 grit. Um, you can go with a, a little bit milder sandpaper, but this one needs cleaned up a lot. So this is really, the, the reason I'm putting this down is to lubricate my, my sanding disc but it's also to prevent this dust from becoming airborne. So what I'm gonna do is just, just sand this mildly in a circular manner. Now I, I realize some folks out there are thinking, well, you should take that to machine shop and let them mill it down. I mean, I understand, I understand that that's the correct way to do it. Um, this is just, it's just not practical for me. This is an old parts table. I just need to make it work. And so what I like to do is just sort of go in a circular manner, orbital manner, and just, just do a quick little sand. Just try to clear up any sort of any sort of buildup, any sort of accumulation of just junk. If you look carefully at this, you can see there is some surface material that had been rusted. And so what I'm trying to do is this, I'll never get this perfect with uh, what I'm doing. Like I said, I'd have to take this to a machine shop and have this milled down some. And um, that's not something I want to do right now. So what I'm going to do is just try to sand off some of this material just to knock it loose. Okay, this is much, much, much better. Much better. Okay, this is what I want. And so what, I, what I'm going to do now is just sand on the other plate, of the other part of the assembly that's in pretty bad condition. Um, this is what I want though, and, and hopefully, hopefully we can get a decent view of this, but this is this is smooth enough, and so when I put the uh, friction disc assembly back together, this disc plate will will, and of course the new assembly plate are going to go together. And what I'll do is I'll spin this up with the PTO on, and and allow this to sort of burn in, if you will. 
So the same process for this. I'm gonna go ahead and lube this up some. There's a lot of dust on this, so I'm gonna really try to put some a generous dose of uh, WD-40 down. And I probably should do a little more cleanup because a lot of this black you're gonna see is coming from up in here. This is pretty chewed up from someone running metal on metal. And um, it's gonna work, but this is the equivalent of not having your rotors turned or replacing your rotors when you put on new pads. And what this will do is it'll cause the, the new friction disc to wear out prematurely. Um, and so, uh, again, I'm just not gonna take this to a machine shop. It's just not worth it to me. It's an old parts baler and um, I don't plan to invest a whole lot of money in it. But I do want to clean this up a little bit more before I put this back together. If you use WD-40 on something, you really don't want that on your brakes or any sort of a friction disc. So I have some gasket remover here, um, spray, that um, it's a solvent. So this will get rid of all of the um, petroleum residue, hopefully. You can see it's really cleaning things up. This is some pretty powerful stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and work on putting this back together. So I'm going to go ahead and put my bolts back through the, um, through the plate. And then I'm going to put this, uh, flip this back upside down, or flip it back the other way, and uh, start putting everything back together. I was hoping to put a new friction disc in this assembly, but this came, the, 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 I ordered two and only one arrived. So this disc here still has some life left in it, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it back in. Then what I'll do is I'll put my new disc in place. Add the, the other uh, friction disc on top. And finally I'll put my, my assembly plate back on top. And it's pretty straightforward. Now I'll put all this back together. And I'm not going to tighten these up very much. And um, the goal is just to put this back together for now. And when hay season gets close, what I'll do is put this, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, burn in, burn in the disc and um, but right now, I just want to just put this back together and, and put it back on the baler. Well, I hope you found this video to be useful. The uh, slip clutch assembly, like I said at the beginning of the video, is very important to make sure that you protect your implement as well as your tractor. So if you have any suggestions to offer me, I'd love to hear from you. I um, hope you leave some comments in the comment section, or um, maybe you can send me an email, but uh, just love to hear your thoughts. And if you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up, and I hope to see you in future videos. Thank you.